Uh, there's our screenshot we can take a look at and we can look at our trends so far. This is a really cool feature here in which I can look at current and voltage, which is super cool. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And in just a few days, we're gonna be heading out and doing a lot of boondocking, which um, we're gonna up our game in the boondocking realm. And how are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, today I'm gonna to be installing a Victron BMV 700 battery monitor. Now you may sit there and say, why do I need a battery monitor? Because my charge control will tell me how many amps are going into the battery, is it will tell you not only what's going into the battery but also what's going out of the battery and do all those calculations to totally maximize your boondocking experience so it'll tell you how many amps you're using when you turn on a fan you're going to see your amperage usage go up when you turn on your refrigerator on propane you're going to see the amperage fluctuate and we're going to do those tests here and show you how that works it'll even give you the amount of time until your battery runs out so you're no more waking up oh man i left the fan on my battery's dead it will tell you all of that. I got it with the Bluetooth boondog, what are they called, boondoggle? What do they call these things? Dongle, a dongle. When you're using it to boondock, it's a boondoggle though. Um, so we got, got that. And inside we've got the instruction manual. Why is it so thick? Because it's in like 20 different languages. This is actually the part that I'm gonna use about that much. It's even in like, I don't, I don't even know half these languages. Portuguese, Italian, Swedish, Espanol, Deutsch, Francais, Netherlands. We've got our cable, our power source. We've got a shunt. And this is the meat of the whole thing. And this is where we're gonna connect our leads. And this little computer part is what's gonna do all the calculations as far as what's going in and what's coming out of your battery. And finally, we have our little display, but hopefully I'm going to use most of it through the app. So we're going to go ahead and get this installation going. And then we'll set up the solar panels. We'll do some testing. And in a few weeks, we'll have a Love Subbing video on how we boondock. Our battery power supply is located under our bed. We have a corner bed, so it's always a pain to strip the bed, move the mattress, and undo a million screws in order to access the panel. All right, you can kind of see the power center here where everything comes in um, from the battery. It's gonna be here. So we're gonna do that. We'll probably mount the shunt in this area. There's the battery disconnect. And let's go ahead and get this project started. So we had one failed crimp, but that one worked yep. very well. And so to do that, we use this monster, um, hydraulic battery cable crimping tool. It was helpful to practice with it too because right. we had to figure out what size die to use because right. they have different uh, settings depending on what size your uh, lug is. Right, so we've got that all crimped together very nicely. Looking good. We will, we've got our shunt wired up with the power and with the data cable. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is fit this onto the wall. And I'm going to do one of the least favorite things I do, and that's drill into my Airstream. So let's go ahead and get going. You know how deep to go, right? <laughs> well, I think so. I kind of measured it. Okay. And Cindy brings up a good point. You know, we want to make sure our screws weren't too long. So I went out, out here. There's the width of the uh, inner and outer skin, so I'm able to check the screw, and I'm nowhere near, because there's also about that much that the shunt's going to take up. So we made sure that we uh, weren't going to drill through the airstream. That would be bad. Indeed, that would be bad. So you pre-hooked the uh, lug. Yep. 
to make sure your height was good, right? Yep. That was one. Yep. And now you're adding your screw. All right, we got one screw in. And here's the next one. That mouse foot really gets into that grill. Yeah, it does kind of clog it up. All right. All right, so we have both screws in. Yep. And we didn't pierce the skin outside. No, I checked. <laughs> Okay, I just sent Cindy inside to get me some water. And while she's not looking, I'm gonna go out front to make sure I just didn't drill through the airstream. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the next step is to measure this to there, probably. Are you gonna have to recrimp it or? No, this goes into there. Okay. And of course, power is completely off. Is it just the battery off or is the battery unhooked? The battery is unhooked. Just turning it off doesn't work. It's a good thing to know. So Rich is declaring that the best tool ever. Yes. And if you haven't watched our video about five tools that you may not think you need, that are very, very helpful, that is one of them. So you're using a socket wrench. Is that what that's called? Yep. To tighten. Yep. Your lug nuts, is that what that, those are called? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we've completed our installation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a temporary installation. We're gonna run this through on this side, um, just to see how it works before I drill a two inch hole into the veneer of the Airstream, which my assistant has proudly advised would be a good idea. So we're gonna do the uh, um, temporary installation. Okay, let's and see ahead. how it works. Let's go ahead and run this wire, turn it on, and see how it works. All right, so we've hooked up the battery. The battery disconnect is still on, and we're gonna go ahead and turn things on. You know, my electricians used to always tell me that occasionally when you turn electrical equipment on, you have to release the smoke that's pent up in the uh, equipment. So we may have to do that, but they used to always assure me that the releasing of the smoke was always a good thing. We'll see. So what was the requirement for the battery before you started up? Yeah, it had to be fully charged, and we had to calculate the amp hour capacity of this battery and you do that by taking the reserve capacity you multiply that by 60 to get seconds divide multiply it by 25 and then you divide that number by 3600 and we came up with 58. you have to print the formula out for everybody. i will so let's go ahead and turn on the uh and we don't know if this is going to work or not so far, no smoke, no sparks. So let's see what we got. So we have, that's actually supposed to be there. So it's gonna ask for the battery capacity. So we've got power, which is good. 12.69 is what it's reading. 12.68, 12.69. We're at 100% charge, sucking up 0.3 amps. So and that's probably- uh, The radio. The radio which its lights are on yep and the carbon monoxide detector because let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn on some lights ready look at that that's pretty cool so that's our lights are drawing two amps turn the lights off and it goes back down to that current very neat so the, looks like we're in business there's the outside patio light. So it looks like we're in business. The last thing I need to do is install the dongle so that I can get my app working. And we're gonna go ahead and do some solar stuff tomorrow, seeing that the sun's already gone down. But this project looks like it worked. Yay. All right, we're gonna continue our testing here. As you can see um, from the screenshot, which I'll show, um, we've downloaded the app. We're now communicating everything. I can do, e check everything. Uh, voltage, we're at 1244. We've got a background amperage draw of 0.16. And in an upcoming episode of Love 7, I'll sh uh, Love 7 Short, I'll show you how to check uh, to make sure that that's not a parasitic draw. But let's go ahead and turn some fans on and see how uh, it changes. All right, and there you can see our, we're now drawing 1.2 amps. We got about two days and three hours. Let's go ahead and turn the back fan on. 
Now we're drawing a total of uh, 2.4 amps and we could run for about a day and four hours. I'll have Cindy turn the fridge on and then we'll get some other stuff going. All right, so we I have configured uh, the RV for say a night. So I've got Cindy's fan running on her bed. We put the refrigerator on propane and we are running two fantastic fans uh, at you know most setting. So that's probably what we would run. We never run them any higher than that. Uh, there's our screenshot we can take a look at. This is a really cool feature here in which I can look at current and voltage, which is super cool as it goes along. So all kinds of cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get the solar ready. Okay, we've got our Zamp 140 watt foldable solar suitcase. We're gonna set that puppy up, go ahead and attach her and see what the battery monitor reads. And that's when things got a little wonky. You see, when I hooked things up and looked at my graph, you can see the voltage spikes just like it should when you're charging the battery. However, the amperage wasn't showing anything going in. The more I looked into it, the more I realized that absolutely nothing can be hooked up to the battery side of the shunt. So I'm going to have to have a separate connection for the solar panel. It'll still work, but that's an improvement we're going to have to do later on. All right, well, there you have it. The installation of our BMV 700 battery monitor. Yep. I think this is going to be a big game changer for us boondocking. It'll be interesting. I don't, we'll learn what we pull. Right. And... We're going to be boondocking this weekend or this week, so it should be pretty good. So how are we doing right now, see? Uh, looks like the battery is at 100%. Yep. Um, we are pulling 0.29 amps. So why would we be pulling 2.29 amps, you think? Um, probably because the fridge is going, right? Yep, we get the fridge fan, which you might be able to hear uh, going. The power converter is probably pulling some amps to run. All right, so how long can we stay on, on the battery? It uh, looks like infinite but we're plugged in. Right, we're hooked into shore power. So it recognizes that and is telling us we can last forever. Yeah, we're just good to go. So we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. And click the subscribe if you haven't already done so. Right, and leave a comment below if you put in a battery monitor and whether that helped you out in your boondocking. Right, or if you think it'll be useful or not. So right. we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.